I forgot I forgot which button to push to start the stream. <laughs> I'm trying to I've got like a couple different steps that I do to get everything running. And I added a step to it and that completely threw me off. Um hello world. How's everybody doing tonight? Um Hopefully good as always. I mean not that we're always doing good, but hopefully hopefully good. As always, I hope you're doing good. That's probably the better way to say that, right? Um or that is a more succinct way to say that? I don't know. Um, yeah. So welcome to Wednesday. Sometimes people joke about like losing the track of the day. I don't think many of us joke about that. Any Not like joking, like joking. Haha. Yeah, sure. But like also it's like, actually, I don't know what day it is right now. It is Wednesday. I saw my therapist today. That's Wednesdays. Ta-da. Um, so tonight, going to try two things. Um, the advent of code, which I found via a Discord that I'm on that's been an amazing Discord, by the way. Um, I don't know if it's like public, public. If it is, I'll see about that, because maybe I'll post a link to it um, if I if that's permitted. Um, oh, only three hours until day three. Um, but So there's these code challenges that go up for this advent of code. There's one or two a day. I think it's two per day. And my understanding is they get like really like they get harder as it goes on. And I'm just going to take a run at them and see how many I can do. Uh, I don't have a computer science background. I don't have a math background. So I expect that some of these will start to get over my head before long. I was able to do day one. We'll see what happens with day two. Uh, so I'm going to do that tonight. And then the other thing tonight is going to be uh, assuming that doesn't take me until three in the morning. Uh, the the other thing I'm gonna do tonight is actually plow under my site and start turning it into a digital garden. And the way that I'm gonna do that actually is live. I'm just gonna like fire it up and do it. I spent a lot of time last night um, getting kind of a prep set up. Uh, Django scratch pads, maybe? Uh, I won music test, is this it? Does that have, no it doesn't. Uh, stand by. Let me see if I can find. Tailwind Playground. This is it. Um, so. I spent a bunch of time yesterday playing around with. Tailwind. A CSS thing, which is. It took me a little while to get back into that because I haven't done much CSS stuff in a very long time. Um, but it's a really neat library. Um, that got me going in ways that I would not have without a, a framework or a library or a actually I don't know what you call that. What does it call itself? Tailwind CSS framework. Okay. Utility first framework or whatever, but like it was, so it took me a little while to figure out how to get it installed because all the installation stuff talks about installing it in um, modern JavaScript frameworks for the most part. Uh, I'm trying to install it in Django, which is where I was experimenting, and then also in, in, install it actually in Hugo, which is what I run my site off of. Um, they're not targeted at that right now, apparently, or maybe I just didn't find the doc. So I, whatever, I found it in Stack Overflow. I got it going. Um, there is something that I will need to figure out at some point, which is right now I just got the full file. They're like the entire framework loaded in one file, and it's like four meg. So I don't want to use that in production, but at the same time with this whole digital gardening idea, I'm actually just going to start with that. Like, okay, that's not the best thing out there, right? That's huge for a CSS file. Um, and I'm only using like 10 of the CSS things, classes maybe. Um, so like that's not old me in all the different ways that there was old me wouldn't want to like do that until I like I had it done and had it made and whatever and like all this other stuff. Um, I was slightly easier to get stuff done when I moved to this Hugo site because I found a, like I found a template that I liked and I liked doing it. But this has that it feels like a blog. It is a blog um, and this digital guarding idea of moving into like not a blog or just not a thing of of links is super cool. Um, and I've just, I've been thinking about it ever since 
I was already thinking about putting some more stuff out there and I wasn't sure how to do it. And this idea of the digital garden came up and like, okay, that's interesting. And I started having some ideas with it. Um, and then last night I started playing around a little bit and what I actually ended up with is not this. Uh, Django plus tail one equals, this, is, this was my first test just to get it going. Also, I love, by the way, the fact that there's now CSS stuff to just like center vertical and horizontal. The number of hours that the collective community spent working on that before now is many. Um, Tailwind. So whatever, I made a few different things. Tailwind Playground, right? So yeah, I'll just walk through them. So first one, this is me just figuring out the thing. Second one, this. So this is the start of a template that I got from somebody else like on one of the free template sites or whatever. And this, so I had this idea of having these little kind of buckets like this hanging out. And so I saw this and I was like, there's some code for me to look at. Uh, and then here was kind of my first start where we start figuring out where the framework's going. I should really do this later in the stream. Uh, I was playing around with color ideas. Didn't like that. Uh, there it is with out color ideas. This is getting closer. I, this I was all like this was almost going to be it, but then I just kept messing around with it. Uh, I put some of these things in. I might still go back to those at some point. Um, seven, seven, seven. And I did all. And so the funny thing is, like I did all this on stream last night. And so there's this other thing with the digital guarding idea of learning out loud, basically, or learning online and learning in public. Um, and I was kind of hesitant to do it on the stream, not because I really care about not looking like I don't know what I'm doing, because I don't know what I'm doing, and like, that's fine. But I wasn't sure, like if I was just sitting there reading documentation for long periods of time, like that would have been not great stuff content-wise, I was thinking. But that's what this stuff looks like, right? That's, I mean, live coding isn't always just kind of sitting there like banging on the keyboard, right? It's sitting there and like going, okay, how, how do I dig through this? How do I go do find things that I didn't know how to do. Um, I do kind of like these now, back up here, now that I'm looking at them. Um, but anyway, so that's number seven. Nine is actually the one that I'm going to go to. I think that's where I did the most work. And then I put them on the other side. I can go back and forth on that. Um, and then this is where, well, actually, let's go, yeah, whatever, nine. So this is going to be it. So this is what I ended up with. And I'm still going to tweak this a little bit, but it's really cool because, like, with this idea of the digital gardening thing, it doesn't have to be done. It doesn't have to be like, so it doesn't have to hit like a, a final version milestone. I'm just going to like go edit the homepage by hand and put this out there tonight. Um, and like having that mind shift about like, Hey, this isn't, like it, it, it's tough. It's tough to kind of describe the shift of, hey, this is my site. There is this thing that I'm making, and I want it to be. I want it to be presentable. I want it to be polished. I want it to be, you know, a fine representation of the best of my work, and all of the skills that I can bring to bear on the project. I'm not a designer, so I just ripped a theme off of the free themes that are available and like put that in. And then I've like made a little tweaks, right? But like the the content too is the other thing that gets in there. And that was the that was the big shift that I've had over the past 24, 48 hours. Is not only does the site not have to be in a pristine state all the time. The content doesn't have to be either right and that's that's one of the big things that i've been hearing about and I, I was already like trying to figure out like how to put out some of my notes and do some other stuff and but i couldn't quite get to like oh how are we going to go through the process and then some other folks are just like well yeah just put some stuff out there and it's like right that's okay it can just be out there and so like i've got i've got some posts that are in my drafts that i'm just going to put out and and then the 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 where that analogy really kicked in for me that was awesome was the idea and I can't and I wish I could remember who said it I heard somebody talking about this 
I, I think it was one of the main uh, uh, people uh, who who is on who's set up this Discord. I think he was in the conversation. I can't remember if it was him or one of the other people that I saw on screen. I'll actually find that video. Um, but they were talking about this idea of just like planting seeds and like that's amazing to me like in terms of the the fact that like these things like i'm just putting these little seeds out here and they're talking about like doing different gardens and doing stuff in different places for me it's probably all gonna be here but what's cool about that right is it doesn't all have to look the same um i have this idea for some some django tutorial stuff that i want to try and the thing that i realized today talking with my therapist was i can just do that here and I could always just do that here, but having that shift into the digital garden thing was just a different, like, it's so freeing that I'm still kind of reeling in a good way from, from it. Like, it's really, so I'm excited to do that. Like, I kind of want to start doing that now, but I want to do this advent of code thing first. So there's all the preamble. We're going to, we're going to see if I can make it through advent of code. And then I'm literally just going to like, I'm going to go through and hand edit my site and be like, I'm gonna take down this page and I'm just gonna start, I'm not gonna build a framework. I'm not gonna do anything. I've got that little CSS stuff built. I'm just gonna put it in, I'm gonna start dropping content in. And then as I play with it, we'll see what happens. And that's another thing, right? It's just, you can't get to the end until you go through all the steps in between. So I'm just gonna start taking those steps because it's so easy to get stuck with like, oh, I've got this idea for the end thing, but I, but I'm not quite there yet. I don't have all the right pieces to make it to the end thing or to move into like, how do I, and I don't have enough energy to kind of, to, to make it as far as I want to, or I wouldn't get it completed. These are all the thoughts that are in my head. But now with this, it's just like, whatever, I'm just gonna do it. Like, I'm just, I'm just gonna work on my garden. I'm just gonna tend to it a little bit. You don't do a garden, like you don't, you don't do a garden, right? You don't finish a garden. Things come, things go. Like all these analogies are just so, awesome and freeing so that's later now advent of code uh yeah all right let's see what we got so i gotta go find it somewhere there's a github repository uh, first thing i guess i should do is see what this is i don't think yeah these these actually no these these codes all give you different input so it's fine if you see my stuff and i don't think you can log into me i'm assuming that these people no these people know what they're doing I'm not worried about showing anything. All right, uh, let's see what's going on. Um, password philosophy. Uh, flight departs in a few days for the coastal airport. There's a running theme for this whole thing, which is cool. Um, the first day you were getting, so the, the goal is to get 50 of these stars and you get one star per completion of a thing and you get two things per day to try and compete. complete. I just compete too. There's there's leaderboards up here as well, um, which I am not going to be on top of, but that is fine. Uh, all right, flight departs in coastal. Easiest way down the coast from here is via toboggan. Huh? Hey, and Wikipedia to toboggan. Never occurred to me that not everybody would know what a toboggan is. It's also a hat, I think, right? Uh. Bum slider. <laughs> that is the name of my new band. Doesn't need context. Just just put it out there. Uh all right. Shopkeeper at the North Pole Toboggan is having a bad day. Okay, that's bad. Can't log in. Uh oh, we're gonna hack. Which password database seems to be a little corrupted. Some of the passwords wouldn't have been allowed by the official Toboggan corporate policy. Yeah, I know those policies. They are sometimes a pain. That was in fact when they're chosen. The debug problem created a list your puzzle input of passwords. According to the corrupted database and the corrupt policy when the password is set. For example, suppose you have the following. Okay. 
Each line gives a password policy and then the password. The password policy indicates the number and highest number of times a given letter must appear to be valid. For example, one three means that the password must contain, oh, A one time. Okay, so A one time, or but up to three at the max. Gotcha. In the example, two passwords are valid. The middle password, CDFG, is not because it doesn't have B. Uh, first, they're very valid. They contain one and they contain a zero or nine C. Wait, what? They contain one A or nine C. Oops. Plural. That didn't look like nine, but it is nine. Uh, okay. How many passwords are valid according to their policies? To begin, get your puzzle input. Okay. Yup. Mm. See, I love this because there's like, you're not going to do that by hand. Um, all right. So there's our policy. So there's our stuff. All right. Let me find. I got to get back on that NASA stuff at some point here. Uh, Scratchpad, Django Garden, Advent Code. All right. Sweet. I might have to flip out to my glasses here in a second. Day two part one version one. Input. One thing that I do kind of miss about Perl is um you could do this thing down at the bottom of Perl. I can't remember it was like end, whatever. And that, you could treat that as a file. Um, you can't do that in Python. Ooh, a thousand of these. Look at that. Also, that hotkey still doesn't work. PyCharm's hotkeys are different. Let me just copy and paste that again since I was messing around with it and make sure it's really legit. A thousand, okay, that makes sense. It's a good number. Uh, sweet. So run that pie uh, with open input that text. This is something I saw somebody do yesterday in the advent of code when I was looking at some other people's advent of code that I really liked. Lots of people right here do file and it's like in so many examples and that's just always freaked me out because like file feels like it should be a reserved word, even though it works. But what she did is she did this and that is beautiful to me. I like that a lot. Um, with file. So what we want to have is lines, right? Oh, no, so you can do, wait a second. Um, can't you pi file lines? Uh, get multiple lines, read like slurp. It's not what I want to do. Create a list of lines this is what I'm looking for. So, oh, but is that scoped? I don't know, I'll find out in a second. Um, lines equals file.readlines. Can you get to it out here or is that freak it out? No such, oh, input.com. My head's in website land, let's try this. Okay, so you can get to it outside. I wasn't sure if that would be scoped in there or not. Um, perfect. Oh, it's got the slash ends on the back of it. Can you turn those off? Python read lines. I have too many tabs open already. Read lines, size hint. Here, what's the docs? Is there a way to basically say, I guess not. Uh, Cause I don't want to have to. L shift, right shift, R shift. 
That's probably not gonna work. Nope, because it's on a line. Uh, see, it's got the new lines at the end of it, which is a bummer. Note. This will keep the new lines on the end. So probably not so useful. Uh, all right, we're not gonna do it that way then. We're gonna do it this way. Uh, oh, I regexed it. That's probably not really required, right? Oh no, this was me pulling in the line and just making sure it had a digit on it. Um, just so there was an extra line, but whatever, I can do that. Uh, all right, here, let's get back to this. Whatever, we're just messing around right now. Uh, there's a thing, here's a thing. What's this? There's our old thing. Close that. Step one, Alan, get the lines in. Uh, lines equals this. So lines append file dot read. Is that right? Wait, they still have the new lines. Also, that didn't go out. How did I do this? I don't know how to use Python. Search, append, and line. Oh, for line and input file. Okay. Ugh. Basics. Basics, basics, basics. For line in file. There we go. Let's try this. And now we'll just do lines append line. Why is this angry? Oh, doesn't like the space up above it. Hey, no. Still with the new lines. Our strip. Okay, that's good. So let me just make sure one of these is actually legit and I didn't strip off too much stuff. This should match, it matches. Okay, cool. Sorry, that was kind of all over the place. Um, Yeah, I'm gonna add that to my notes. Better way to do it is probably actually create a list of lines. Let's not have to go past the other. So let's put that in the notes. And so this is the type of, type of stuff that I'm looking to put in the digital garden, right? And so I'm starting to work more and more of making these like more presentable, but I'm not going to do too much with them, right? So I'm just going to like get this and I'm going to write some little scripts that basically pick these things up and just throw them onto the garden. Um, and then I'll keep working on them and look at better. Um, this also works, but it has new lines. Uh, tap that over one more the r r strip pulls off new lines at the end oh i know why the other one worked i was turning it into an integer so when i did this one i was slamming it into an int which cropped off the new line yeah that's cool. I was trying to, I couldn't figure out why that worked. Now we know. Uh, hey, let's write some code and see if we can figure this out. All right, so let's look at this and see what we got. Let's pull an example. This looks like a good example, 8.30. So, Here's one possible solution. What if we just 
did this. Um, and they're all... Let me look at the pattern, because I think we can just split on the spaces, right? Because it's always... Set a, set a number, space, letter, colon, space, numbers, letters, whatever those things are. Yeah, so those are in there. So what we could do is actually just count... We could count the number of characters, replace, run a replace over the thing with the character to mush it out and then count after it's collapsed. And then the difference would be that number, right? Uh, or the difference should be above or below. Um, And the question is, so I kind of want to do this with a test. I saw somebody else doing a test, and I'm trying to practice test driven development, so we're going to do a test. Test run.py. All right, so user bin, environment, Python, and we're actually in, so I've got a Py environment set up, which is 3.9, whatever. Um, import unit test, and then I'm actually going to do this. This is me also practicing, so like, welcome, because um, what we're actually going to try and do is make a class out of it, class runner. Uh, and I'm going to do this with a style of development that I learned from a woman named Sandy Metz called Shameless Green, um, which is fun and awesome. Uh, so first thing we're going to do is class, runner, test, is a unit test, test case, hello, autocomplete. Um, Run just needs, let's just put a pass here for a minute. Pass. Test runner, runner. So, uh, def. Oh, actually, we need to call it, right? From dot run import runner. Okay, so we got that. Def setup self. I still don't know if this is the right way to do this, but this is the way that I saw it once and it works, so I continue to do it. Runner. So that just gives us our thing. Um, and then so I'm just going to go here and do a tone test. PT is my extension to give me that. And then if name equals main, main, I always say main like that, main, unit test, main. Don't do that. That was unnecessary. This is better. Uh, didn't like that, didn't like that. I try and go with Pepe just because I don't like those yellow lines. Pepe, Pepe, Pepe. Uh, so just run a tone test, make sure we got a test that's working. Yeah, so cool, test passed. So now, um, the way, the way Sandy Metz does it and the way that I really like it is She does two things, one of which is called shameless green, and the other one is only is staying one step away from green. So like in the way that she does that and the way that I've kind of worked in my practice now is I'm just going to do I need. So the first thing I need to do is figure out uh, what like what the thing is that I want to test. Um, so. <laughs> well, so I, I'm actually I like so I don't I don't have a good this, the other thing that's interesting about the test stuff is it's super easy to, like I could just kind of jump in and start cutting things apart, but going through the test stuff makes me think about it differently. And so what I'm actually going to do is I'm just going to get one. Uh, let's not do that one. Let's do the first one, which also is a bunch. So uh, I'm going to do R.
check, run, check, password, right? Password equals that. Uh, password line. So I also like explicit names and uh, explicit calls. So this is going to fail right now because check password doesn't exist. So I'm going to move this over here so we can get these in the right direction. So now all I'm going to do is um, I'm going to make this pass. So and it's not actually I'm not actually calling anything. I, I'm only calling it. I'm not assigning it. Right. But so uh, step one, what do we call it? Check password. Uh, is password valid? Change the names. It's all cool. So is password valid self pass. Um, and so this is going to fail. And I really should have done this in two steps. Like if I was really going to go like strict on it, um, but because it's got an unexpected keyword, right? So now we're going to pass this. And again, the way that I like doing this is explicit. So we're going to do that. Now when we run it, it's going to pass. It's not really doing anything yet though. So now we can actually use it as an assignment. And so our expected value, let's see if this one is going to pass or not. So actually, hang on a second. One, two, I want to make this easier for me to deal with. A, A, B. So this one is going to return true is what we want to have happen. So our expected value here is true. Our actual value is true. Again, I'm just making sure the test itself works. And now what I'm going to do is call my method and assign it back to actual. This is going to fail, and we know it's going to fail, but that's cool. That's what I want. I want that failing test. And now this is where Shameless Green comes into it, is to make this pass, I am simply going to return true. Now it's passing. And so from here, I can start going and doing the math, basically, to, to make things happen. Um, and with this one, so this is really test integration, right? So we got an integration test. So now I need to figure out how to deal with this. And now that I've kind of got that, that last thing in there, I can start to figure out, OK, what do I need to make this true false happen? Um, and again, I'm back to where and this this particular time, the, the integration didn't help me as much, but I kind of like knowing that it's out there because when I run all the rest of this stuff and get it working, I should be able to call is password valid on this thing and have it give me a true value for this once I actually put all the code in here. Right. Um, so now let's do this. Um, let's do this. Ready? Test. So we'll make a little thing here. Test low number. And you M B E R low number. And again, this is very much in a way, this is overkill for what I'm trying to do, especially because like there's speed runs and all this stuff. But this is practice for me. These are great little practice problems for me um, to to focus on. So I'm going to use this. I'm going to use a different input. I don't want my test input to be the same every time because it's I've gotten fooled by that before when I'm looking at one and like I hard code something in to pass one test and it ends up passing another test that it shouldn't have. Um, so like uh, password line. So given a password line that's this that we'll actually put in quotes. My expected low number is three. And again, actual low number is three. This just confirms that the pass works, test works. Hmm. So now, so I'm already trying to think about implementation, which is which is not what I need to be doing, right? So what I want to do is just do r low number. By the way, folks, I've got no idea if I, I like I'm probably doing this six different ways wrong, but. This is how we figure stuff out, right? Um, I need to read more books, too. Uh, so this is going to fail because that doesn't exist. Cool. We got a failing test. We like that. H-I-J-K-L, low number. 
uh, and now we're just going to return three. Well, actually, sorry. Right now, we're going to return nothing. Because I want to go back here. And this is part of the, the practice of back and forth. So that's passing now. So I'm, I'm one. St I, the next step that I do, I'll still be one step away from green. And sometimes this feels like overkill, but every now and then it saves you. Um, and it saves you quick. It's that whole fail fast thing. So if we call actual here, this is going to fail out. Cool. Now if we return three here, we should be passing. And there's our pass. All right, so now where do we want to put this? So let's assign this to raw line. Hmm. Yeah, uh, no, let's assign it to password line. Put that there. And so this will still pass, but I'm actually going to go here. And I just want to initialize that, which I don't have a good way to test that. I mean, there's not a good, I mean, you could say, hey, it's initialized or whatever, but self, boom, 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 and then self. I just like having stuff initialized um, prior to whatever. Is this going to be that static thing? I still don't know what this means. Method is password, maybe static. Probably that there's no action happening in it, I'm guessing. Also, I'm going to do this. I'm going to break this for a second. So I'm jumping back to that other test. And I don't know if that's kosher or not, but we're going to do it. Because since this looks like the way the way we're going to do this. I'm going to pass this as an instance variable instead of passing it that way. All right. Th that passed. OK, yeah, so we're not. This is now hard-coded, so I just, this is doing nothing other than get, returning a hard-coded value, but this will be the setup um, that it should work once everything is working. All right, so this is good, this is good, this is good. All right, so now we're just trying to get three. Um, and so the the other thing that, that Sandy recommends is do the simplest thing that gets you to pass. And like, you know, I could do like just grab the first thing, but like it could be a 10. So we know it's not, we know just grabbing the first character of the string is probably not going to get us there. Um, we should also work on the right thing here. But what we should be able to do though, right, is um, low number is, I have way too many things open, but I'm not going to close them because it's awesome having a code low number so this is our this is our data uh so low number so we're just going to do password line split on dash and we're going to grab the this first thing of that Uh, so I'm going to run this. It still should pass because I'm not actually passing the number back. I don't know if that number's right or not. Oh, actually, you know what I can do? I'm getting better at debugging, too. Let's do that. Let's put a debugger in there and see what happens. Load number three. Okay, cool. So it's working. Um, and then, then I'm just going to return the load number. I'm going to rerun my tests. Stop and rerun, please. Thank you. Oh, one failed. Ah, because it is a string. So we're going to int that. Put that there. Run it. Passing. Passing, passing, passing. Uh, all test passed. Cool. All right, so there's a low number. 
Def test. Oh, here. I keep forgetting I've got this. That helps. Hi, number. So again, I'm going to grab a different set of input. Our password line equals this. Cool. And we're going to look for 13. Lucky number 13, ladies and gentlemen. So run it. Just make sure the test works. Test works. R dot high number. And you M B E R. This is going to fail because that doesn't exist, especially if I hit the right button. That was the wrong button. Hit the right button. Uh oh, there we go. Uh, fails. We know that, that fails because it didn't exist. Expected failure. Cool. H I H I. Hi. Get it? H I. On the high number. Uh, and so the other thing I usually do is I do high number equals whatever one, and return high number. I just like having that filled out already. So passing because that exists. Now we're actually going to use it. And so that's the thing I like about this is very methodical. And once you kind of get going on it, especially as you get your head into where things are, it makes these nice kind of short little things. Um, so that's failing because we got the wrong number now, 113. And so again, I'm not going to try and solve this right now. I'm just going to get the test passing. There's our test pass. Let me make sure it's actually testing the right one by doing all of them. There we go. Um, so now I can actually do the work. I've got that green back behind me. So I'm like my, I'm solid basically. I, and I'm always one step away from green because no matter what I do, I'll do my work here. And I've always got this one as the backstop. So when I think I'm good up here, I'll comment this out. You get the idea. Um, so high number is 13. So let's look at our input at our example. I'm listening to different music than you. I'm sorry about that. Um, there's our example. So this one, uh, I don't want to overthink it too much. But we could, so, and, I, and this is also, I'm doing a little bit of an exercise because like the simplest thing would be do this. Let's just do the simplest thing that I can think of. So we're going to import RE. And one of the things that I really do like about this code thing is I get to look at other people's solutions for the same thing that I did. There's also a exorcism IO that's out there that is, I've done that a couple times before and that's super cool as well. Uh, all right, this is where I got to go to my notes. Hi, reg X, capturing matches. Okay, so matches equals re search. Oh, can you see my notes? Yeah, okay, they're over there. And then you're really supposed to, actually, let me put that there. You're supposed to do an R here. In here. So we want to match. Yeah, you could do all of this with splits without regular expressions. Because you could split on the dash, then you could split on spaces, and then you could split on colon, and you'd have all the different things. It's less efficient for me, like, or you could just write one, one regex and get all of it. Um, but I kind of like this idea of like getting the things individually right now. Uh, again, the small, concise little things going on. Um, but so we've got a D and we know that it can be any number of digits and then a dash. And then we want to capture any other number of digits here followed by a space. I'm not going to check if matches exists. 
because if it if it doesn't match i want the program to die hard on me um so we're just gonna try and go high number equals matches groups or group group one group one uh and i'm just gonna try it we'll see what happens nope oh it's gotta be an integer Ran three tests, one failed. Where's my output? Missing one required position on string. Oh, right. We should definitely pass the line to it. That's helpful. Now let's try it. Now we failed. 13 is not 13. Yeah, yeah, so we need to make this an int again. And that, I believe, will pass. There we go. Cool. Uh, so now we need the target letter. H I L is integration. I'm leaving integration at the bottom. But we'll do this here. Uh, target letter. Target letter. Target letter. Target letter. And we're gonna grab another one. How about mm, this one? Looks all over the place. I like it. And it's got an X in it. It's very whatever. Our password line equals that. So again, just run the test, make sure everything's green, that we didn't screw anything up already. Uh, our target letter. Expected failure. Make it go. Which it go. Def that 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 that, and then yeah, you know, I really should make a like an extender thing for or like a hotkey for like just make this method, but then make the thing be the first thing and the third thing. Like, cause I just typed that three times, right? Uh, all right, we're passing just because that's going in there. Cool. Now we're going to use it, and it's going to fail. And this is what I mean. Like once you kind of get rolling on this, it's pretty easy to like make progress. So this will pass, right? And we can just wipe this. Now we can go do our work. And let's keep this just as an example. So there's our example. Um, so we know that it's only one letter. So I should be able to do this. Um, oops, self, password line, split. We're gonna split on spaces again. Actually, I don't know if we did that yet. All right, this is gonna be tricky. I don't know if this is gonna work or not. We're gonna see if this is gonna work. So I wanna get, so if I'm splitting on the space, the three through six is zero. I want to get the X and the colon, which is one. So I want to get this. And then I want to get the first, uh oh, it yelled at me. Why is it yelling? It does not like that. Same I am. Statement seems to have no effect. Oh, right, because we want to assign it to something. How about that? So I think this is gonna get the first or the the index one position group, which will be X and colon, and then grab the first item from that, from the string, I think. I'm not sure. We're gonna try it and see what happens. Actually, you know what? I'm gonna start getting better about using debug. So I'm gonna put, oh, wait a minute. I'm also practicing using the debugger, which I know is Probably not a thing for most people. Like, oh, you're just using the debugger. Like, I don't use it. Oh, nope, missed it. Oh, I need to get the zero position. How do we stop it? This needs to be zero. Because it's the f index one of the split, but then index zero is the first character of the thing. So let's run that again. And then hopefully you can see it down here. Yep, so X letter new is that, is our X. 
So hopefully this works. Hooray, it passes. Let's run all the tests. Sweet. Um, so that's got, now we just need our string. PQRST. Test um, password string. We'll call it that. R password line equals, let's pick another one. Let's get a one with an eight and a 10 in it. How about that? This looks good. So now the string that we're looking for is this. Just tone test, make sure everything's working. R dot password string. Expected failure. Back in here. P Q R S T. Okay, here. Yes, I have to spell like that all the time to do the alphabet. That is how my brain works. Uh, password string equals blah. Return password string. So this will pass because we're not doing anything with it yet. Now it's going to fail. because we're not doing the right thing. But when we put this in, our expectation is that this passes. Cool, so now we're there, we can do our work. Uh, let's grab our example. Oh, so this should be pretty simple too, right? Just grab the split and get the right, and get the right index this time. Um, Spell it right. Password string equals self password line split on a space. All right. So this is one. No, that's zero. This is one. That's two. Give me a two. All right. We're just going to try it and see what happens. That passed. Ray. All right, and this is one of those, like, every now and then, I like coming in here and, like, is it really doing the right thing? Yes, it is. So there's my failure, because if we look down here, we see the numbers are different. There's that, there's that one that we put in. Now we can take it back, and now we're green again. And then click down here so we can run the full suite. There we go. We're in. Get rid of that. And that. And that. Um. Yeah, I do kind of like this. The, the other one that I like that... Sandy would talk about is she's got like the Sandy Mets rules for um, I don't remember which one of these is the right one there are four rules yeah classes can be no longer than 100 lines of code methods no longer than five and that's that gets tricky fast um, pass no more than four parameters. Um, controllers can instantiate only one object. Therefore, you can only, uh, I don't know, that is beyond me. But like, this is the one that I really have kind of tried to focus stuff on. Um, and so like, these are only a couple of pieces. Like, and that just, it makes it easier to hold them in your head. Um, so I like that. So, okay, now we've got our data. So now we just need to do the algorithm, right? Um, and here is, here's a trick, which I don't know. I can't think right now of another method to put in here to ga to grab, to, to do the math basically. Um, oh, actually, yeah, yeah. So, and again, this is probably overkill and probably lots of different stuff and whatever, but like, um, what we could do. So yeah, let's, let's actually, let's split this out. So like everything's a method basically. So each one of these steps is like, is a little atomic 
Tseng. So like, and this is going to be a ridiculous one. Um, now here's the trick is this is going to bounce through two different methods. This, this is where I get into the thing of setting instance variables and like, see, now I'm completely thinking about going back and redoing all of this in the way that I did it. Because these things are called as methods, which means in order to test a method that needs one of these numbers, I would be testing two methods at the same time. I don't want to do that. Um, crap. That's okay. This is how this is how I learn. So, um, how do we back out of that? I, I'm not really going to be able to back out of it. But like, how can I move through that? I'm trying to think about like, is, if I already had this deployed, how would I go about doing that? But you know what? I don't have it deployed. So, and just for fun. I'm not quite ready to just delete that stuff yet. But really what we want, right, is we want inst we want instant methods. We want instance methods, methods for all that stuff. So let's take a run at it again. Um, and like we've already done the logic, right? So this should go relatively fast. It's just going to be assigning it to different places. Um, def test. Yep. I forget that I have this. So much better. Hi number uh and again i'm just gonna grab different stuff our password line equals this yeah because this this is better this is better sorry to go for 11 and 11 Okay, this is a very really, a really different thing. Um, yeah, so because what we'll need to do is there actually needs to be a method that doesn't that only makes a change. And I can't remember what the different there's like two things that it can do, right? It can either make a change internally or it can return something. And you're not supposed to do stuff that does both of those things because it gets confusing fast. Um but so what I'm looking for is here, we're going to do R. And this is also good. I was talking with somebody on chat the other day that was talking about like ask, no, tell, don't ask with classes. And I need to go read more on this. Um, but like this, this actually falls into that um, where it's basically, I'm going to say like, Split password line. I'm telling the class to do a thing. So this is going to fail again. And see, this is cool because the methodology works in both ways, right? And I actually am going to end up splitting this all <laughs> in one little regex now. Okay. Um, so this is going to return true or pass or whatever. But here's where... Um, so R... No, no. Actual equals R high number. So this is going to fail because that doesn't exist. Self high number equals none. So this will pass now because it exists. But when we do this, it's going to fail because it's not returning the right thing. But with split this, now all we're going to do is self high number equals. So again, we're going to hard code. What was it 13? 11. We're just going to hard code it in. Again, I want to get to green as fast as possible. And then from here, I can actually go do the work. Um, yeah, we're going to end up just using one big regex. That's cool. Um, 
da, 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 where am I going? Here. So, oh, I know what I want. I want a example string to play with. I should have started with the low number. You know what? We're going to start with the low number. Because that's the first thing. It will go left to right. And that's going to be a different number. We're going to want eight. So I think this is going to fail because I don't think I moved it over there. I did not. There's our eight. There's a passing. Okay, so we're in good shape. Uh, so split password line. Now here's our input. Um, so again, easiest thing to do to make it pass. And this is where I struggle a little bit, because like I know we're going to want all the rest of that stuff. Actually, I want to see if I can... Uh, this, this will be an exercise. I want to see if I can do this without regex. Like, how would you go about doing it? And this is not advent of code. This is just me being interested to see like what this would look like without regex. Um, especially because we've got this test thing, and we're going to build these up. So... Uh, here, we're going to keep that there, right? That's our that's our backup. We're going to get our password line. We know we want it to be an int. Self password line dot split on dash zero. And what happens if we run that? We passing? Got it. Passing. Uh... And again, I keep like every now and then it's like I want to go back here and like, let me just make sure it's really passing. There's 81, there's eight. Yeah, okay, cool. I think I'm going to like this better. Th this is going to be funny though. This is going to be, I was just talking about like the five lines thing. This might very well be longer than five lines. And so if that's the case, I have to talk to y'all and say, explain my reasoning. Um, def. Remember that we have this. High number. Grab a different input. Our password line equals that. And we're going to look for five. Make sure the test runs. All cool. R split. I think I want this up here. Whoops. Uh, run those. Sweet. So we're looking for five, and now. Whoops. Again. Actual. And this is so. This is actually one of the reasons you kind of run through this. Uh, number is this is going to fail because that doesn't exist and what's what i like about that is it lets you know hey we actually need to go and in, instantiate it and initialize it make it be a thing h i j k l self high number none so it should pass then it should fail Then it should pass because we hard coded it. Nice. And now we can do the thing self high number equals. I should probably keep one of these, just one of these over here. Oh. No, it does work. I want to test that with a 10. I'm going to do that in a minute. Make first number 18, uh, 10, because I want it to be less, whatever. So here, uh, let's try it in there. So 
so the split would be you could do it you could do it a couple different ways but like so if we split on the dash and then split on I'm actually oh this will be interesting I don't know how this works so if we split on the dash the target that we want is in slot index one if we split and this is gross this is probably not a good way to do this but if we split that on spaces then we want zero and if we int that now we use a debugger again ah uh, but see yeah right yeah because like the debugger is weird like high number x even though that's not done yet variables self high number x is a five high numbers not okay so it hasn't made it here yet it, it stopped i'm still unsure where the debugger it like it stops before the line that it's on but so that's giving us a five there so that's what we're expecting and it's an integer sweet so let's comment that out let's run our tests test passing let's run them all passing sweet So that's our low number, high number. Now we get our letter. Oh, wait, we want to do this as a 10. Hopefully this just passes. It does. Okay, cool. Uh, and actually, I guess we really should do this as an 11. Also, should hopefully just pass. Yeah, because I want to make sure that I'm really getting both digits or any number of digits. So let's run the full suite again. Passing. Cool. Um, so next up is the letter. Uh, target letter. IJKL. Okay. Target letter. Input. No, 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 no. Actually, yeah, okay, that's up there. Um, R password line equals that. Target letter's gonna be in, in. So this will pass. Split password line, sweet. And then here, Yo, oh, dude. Well, someone in their household did. Yeah, still. That's scary, man. The uh, are you going to go get tested or what's the what's your play? Are you just kind of seeing if you cough? I'm joking about that's gallows humor, I guess is what that is. Actual equals R dot target letter. So this will blow up. We'll initialize it. Target letter equals nothing. Do you do these as none? Is that the best way to do these? I actually don't know. Try that. See what happens. Oh, okay. That's cool. I mean, it's not cool, but that is good if that happened. Um, I think I had it in February, so or March. Um, all right, because I had something that was very flu-like, but didn't check all the boxes, and they kind of knew it was around, but they didn't have tests for it at that point. So, who knows? But I'm still like being super safe. Um, 
or trying to be anyways because it still kind of messes with your head uh, all right so this will pass and now I need to make it go here and this will fail and put this in in what are we doing in and yeah there we go so now we gotta go get our n so this is where we can do a single uh a single letter self password line split on spaces and then we're going to grab slot one character zero and then I'm going to put the debugger in here and just see what we got target letter in looks like we got it so comment this out run test pass let's run the full suite yeah I uh, actually had to make a small visit to the hospital recently like but it's funny because I was asking or not funny but whatever I was asking them I was like hey well I'm here can I get the antibody test and they're like and the nurses were like you know, I'm not sure if we do that. You're a hospital. But if you're treating the sick, yeah, okay, I'll give you a pass. Um, but yeah, so I, I haven't had one yet. I, I should go get one, but I, that would involve getting stuck with a needle. And I really don't like getting stuck with a needle. Uh, like, I pass out if I get stuck with a needle kind of thing. Because my brain says, nope, that's not allowed. Uh, oops, I did that already. Uh, ba -ba 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 -ba. So there's our target letter. And now we just need the string. Yeah, yeah, CVS. No, we got one. We have CVS and Walgreens both. They do them there? I don't think I knew that. Do you have to get stuck? Or is it just like one of those nose swab things? Uh, what's the next thing we're looking for? Password string. P Q R S T. Def. Nope. P T. Password string. Let's grab a new one. This one looks like a visual puzzle. And we're looking for this, 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 this. So we're gonna run our password line. And then actual equals r dot password string. Yeah, I like this better with the, oops, sorry, instant variables. failing because we know password pqrs it comes after so self password none i've been working on getting that on my tooth for like an hour and then here's our password thing so this should just be self password string equals and we're just gonna shameless green this Oops, I skipped a step. Oh well. There you go. So that's passing because we're hard coded. And now we can make it go for real. Which hopefully is just going to be self password line split on spaces zero one two. Two. I want to try it and see what happens. Got it. All right, all the tests are passing. So there's our, all our data. That didn't take too long. Get rid of these now. Boop.
uh, and get rid of all these. Split password line. Yeah, so that's the four parts. One, two, three, four. Yeah, cool. Whoops. Sometimes it jumps, and I don't understand how it jumps. Also, wasn't there... Oh, this is what I was looking at. Yeah, this isn't bad at all. It's funny, because, like, regex is a thing that I really like using or whatever, but it's an experiment to try and try it with this. I, I don't believe you. I, I do not believe it. I do not believe I can ever be stuck with a needle. I don't care. Like, okay, nanoparticle, right? Nanoscale, where it's like it goes in between atoms. Maybe. But every time they say, oh, this will just be a little prick or this won't hurt at all. That's a lie. I don't believe them. They lie. Uh... All right, so we got our numbers, and we got our integration. Where did our integration test go? Oh, did I do the integration test? I might have. I did. I should keep that one. That's a good one. We want that one. You come back. So this should all still pass, because that's... Oh, wait, failed. What? Oh, is password valid? Hmm, is that still... Yeah, that's what we want, right? Def is password valid, self is valid, is valid, is valid equals true. Okay. So now, and, and this is, again, I'm using this as an exercise to do testing, so... And I'm trying to figure out like the methodology of where you would kind of put all this stuff. Cause like what I want to do is I want to get two more numbers, which is the initial length. Actually, I want, I want three more numbers. I want the initial length. I want the smushed length and then I want the diff. Um, And like I could do that all in one method, but I'm trying to figure out if there's a place to, to split it. But again, we'll just work on the the easiest part to do. So now that we've got these numbers, um, well, so this is where you could pass stuff. Yeah, so this is where you would pass and return stuff. Okay, okay, I think I'm cool with it. I'm liking this structure. So count original number, how about this? Count original number. Oops, I actually want to use something different. Our password line equals that jazz. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen. 14. I'm gonna get a smaller one because I'm not sure I counted that right. Let's, let's get one with like, oh, I don't know, four. Oh, I hit, uh, I hit copy instead of paste. Let's try that again. 
so now we're looking for four. And four. So that'll pass because it's just hard coded, or it's just in the test. So let's do our count original number. Oh, 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 actually. Should that happen in the password split? It probably should, right? So we're going to assign a variable instead of telling it what to do. Let's put this alphabetically. Again, this is where like those decisions, I don't have a good framework for where to like put stuff as instance variables or calling back and forth or whatever. This is my suspicious look. You go first. No, I don't trust you. You already said it didn't hurt. Stick a four-year-old with it. And then if the four-year-old cries, I'm out. If the four-year-old doesn't cry, I'm in. How about that? That'll be my... Because I am as much of a whatever is a wuss as a much of a wuss basically as a four-year-old. I don't think it's a good word to say anymore. Um, but I, I have the, I have the fortitude of a four-year-old. There we go. It's a better way to say it. Uh, so yeah, so let's actually do the split lines here, right? So we can just load that. And then our dot original number count. There's not a thing, so that's going to fail. M O P. Self original number count equals none. That should pass it. Then we need it to be four. Right here. So that would just be self original number count equals, oh wait, four. Let's just make sure we're in the right ballpark here. Yeah, so we're hard coding it in. And I think we can just do this. Uh, Len, length, right? So there's our original number count. And then I feel like the right thing to do is to run. And, and really what I'm trying to do is just, I guess I'm trying to shoot for all instance variables here, uh, which again, I don't know if that's the right way to do this, but like, because we only need, well, like, so that one variable is in an instance variable. I want the other one in an instance variable. So, um, how about this? I'm spending way more time thinking about just loading the data than I actually am working on the logic. Um, like I've got I, I, the logic I'm, I think I've got, um, test. Something just blinked over there. I'm not sure what it was. Um, make compressed number, number. All right. So let's find one here. Okay, here's a bunch of Bs. So our password line, there's all our Bs. 
and then we're going to run. So the value that we want is one because there's going to only be one thing after we suck out all the, uh, all the B. So there's our one. Make compressed number. This is going to bomb because that doesn't exist. Oh, actually, hang on. We're doing this. This isn't quite the right thing. So we need to do... So this is where I'm not sure, like, the best way to test into this. Because really what the thing that I need to do is get to here first. So actual equals R compressed test or compressed number. Which is going to bomb because it doesn't exist. Whoops. Especially when we delete it. So then we're going to make it exist. Now it's going to pass. It's going to fail again because it's not set to one. And here's, here's where we got two things that need to, so like this gets slightly beyond one step away from green, but what I'm going to do is just make this method, uh, M -m 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 and we're going to set this to one. Let's look at this passing again. Especially if we do this and actually call it self. And especially if we do this and not put a space there. All right, so I think that's going to get us passed. It does. Let's run the whole suite. Passing. Okay, yeah, so we're hard-coded, but we're in. Uh, so now make compressed number, we actually get to do the logic. And so make compressed... And see, this is where... Oh, no, no, no! This is great. This is great. This is exactly what I was trying to get to. Because we don't need a password line. In fact, we aren't going to use the password line. We're just going to set the specific instance variables that this particular method needs which in this case is r dot password line, no, password string. No. Yes, string, which is this. And then target letter. Why? Oh, because they're not equal there. Okay, gotcha. Let's get that. So this should still pass because we're not doing anything with these values yet. But now, so I've got the values to actually play with, and hopefully, uh, yeah. So I don't have to pass anything into it. And again, this is me getting my head kind of around some of this stuff. But compressed number equals. So it's going to be self self dot password string Wait, how do you do Hang on a second. Yeah, how can I do replace on the end of this. Is that going to work? Oh yeah, it did work. Okay. Wait, did it actually work work? Okay, all this working. Oh, it just didn't, the audio complete didn't go. Let's see what debugger gives us if we do this. W, that's it. So then, but we don't want the W, we want the length of this. And this needs to be self dot target letter.
So I think... This is a little gross. Um, except not, because that's really just it. It's just long. So if we run everything... Whoops, hit the wrong button. If we run everything... Seven passed. There you go. So there's your logic right there to get the compressed number. So now it's just a matter, and so this is where we actually put in the, the data here. Um, where's a simple one? This one. We're going to use this for our test. Oh, test integration. Actually, what's the logic? Uh, like, what's the so if it's it can only it has to occur three, and it can't occur more than four. Right is what the what the goal of this thing is. Password policy and then a password. Uh, password policy indicates the lowest and the highest number of times that a letter must be. Given times a letter must appear. For example, one to three means that a password must contain at least one A and at most three. Okay, so it's inclusive. Errors off by one, errors coming my way. I can feel it. So it should just be. Yeah, so this is where the integration comes in. So is password valid self? This is where you gotta do the assembly. You do that, and then you make the compressed number. If, so what's the, And then, uh, actually, hang on. Let's back this up. Let's call this make support numbers. The, yeah, I don't know. I kind of want everything to be an instance variable. So the thing that's not an instance variable right now is the diff. So you make the compressed number. Make diff number. Yeah, let's actually make that its own thing. One of these days, I'm going to remember to do that. Make, make, make diff number. And so What is gonna be in the diff number? So we start with, how do we get the diff number, right? So we start with the string length, which is the original number count. minus compressed number. So those are the two things that we need to populate. And like this, this is super simple, right? I'm just doing subtraction, but I'm 
I'm taking this particular approach with the, with, with this data, so we'll see what happens. Um, so R dot original number, whatever, equals seven. R dot compressed number equals four. Expected three, actual three, run the test. Whoops, see, it's one of the reasons we do that. Run the test. And then so then what we're looking for is actual, well, let's just do it this way, all the way through. So diff number, which is gonna blow up, expected failure. Self diff number equals none. That'll pass. Actual equals three. Not using it yet, because we also need to, after we set those, we need to go r dot make diff number. So that's gonna fail. Def make diff number. Pass it, passing. Come back here. Here's where we actually get to call it. That was the right way order to do that in, by the way. Because I'm still doing the one one away from green. So uh diff number. Self diff number equals three. Uh, let's make it four just to watch it fail with a oh I did the wrong thing. With a diff. So there's four versus three. Now we hard code it the three and pass. So now we're sure that that's doing that, which we already were, but whatever. Um, it's another logic super easy, right? So self diff number really is going to be self original number count minus self compressed number. So that should be three. We should be able to do this. We should be able to run that. Passed. Pass. Nice. Okay. Run the full suite. Pass. So is password valid? So now we've got now we've got all the tools, right? We don't have to make any other method calls. We can just do straight logic here. And that's what I was that's what I was going for. Yeah, I like this. Okay. So we need to split the password line. Make our compressed number. See, so this feels like the right way to do this, right? Is you make, and I really need to go study more about like patterns for object oriented stuff. Um, and so if well, so here, let's just make sure this all still compiles. Okay. And so this should be true. So three and four, it's in between three and four, right? Now here's the, here's the trick is figuring out how to test this. So what I'm actually going to do is do this one. So this should fail. I think it's going to be easier to target the failure cases first. Because what we can do, I want to set this as true up here. And then I'm putting it to false, but here's where I want to put in the conditional. I guess you could have done this either way, but so if self diff number is less than 
self low number return false passed and then if I take that out of there it should still pass okay so that's one test case and then if And so we need another test here. Test integration, false, low. Test integration, false, high. Just grab something that looks cool and then we'll put a few extras in. Our password line equals V's, so let's put several in there. So, uh, so let's put four in there. One, two, three, four. So this should also be false. So false. So this will pass. But what should happen is this should fail. I want to see the failure. Watch the failure. Because false ain't true. But then if we do, if self diff number is greater than self high number, return false. Run it, passing. It's wonderful suite. And then let's do this. So that's cool. Those are all working. So it has to be either, it has to be in one of those three places. It has to be either above it, below it, or in it, right? Um, that's a fail, but we're gonna paste it in anyways and do it. Test, true. So this should fail right now because we're not doing anything with it. Uh oh, something exploded. What happened? Test yourself. What? Unintent. Oh, indent stuff. That is the annoying thing of Python sometimes. All right, so that's failing. But well, if we come down here, it should just be return true right here. That's it. Okay. That's our three, that's our three cases. And I'm actually going to put this into so I like so like some people do it without they just fall out to this one. I like making it explicit. Okay. So there's the code. It's not bad. Uh. All right, so how do we actually respond to this? How many passwords are valid according to their policies? Oh, okay. Uh, let's do this. So. Oh, we actually don't need to put the lines in that way. I shouldn't have done that yet. Um, so with open input.txt, is read as the magic file, fail, file, for line in file.
R equals runner. R password line equals line. So I just add the password line and then true count equals zero if R is password valid, true count plus equals one. Print true count. Run it. 396. All right, do we think that's it? <laughs> Out of a thousand? Let's see what happens. That's the right answer. I got a gold star. Continue to part two. That took a long time. Ah, eh, whatever. Uh, well, it appears they don't seem to be official. I was expecting. Shopkeeper suddenly realizes he accidentally explained the password policy rules in an old job at the sled journal place. Okay, fair. Toboggan sleds. Official works a little differently. Each policy actually describes two positions in the password, where one means the first character and two means the second character, and so on. Be careful. Uh, have, a con have no concept of index zero. Exactly one of these positions must contain the given letter. Other occurrences of the letter are irrelevant for the purposes of this. Given the same example file list above, Oh, interesting. Okay, is A position one is valid. And position three does not. Where one means the first character and two means the second character and so long. Two positions the password. Exactly one of these positions must contain the given letter. Other occurrences of the letter are irrelevant. For oh, 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 so. So it's not, it's either or. Exactly one of these positions. Aha. Okay, interesting. Whoops. That still work? Did I break it? Okay, there we go. Uh, all right, so cool. Let's do this. Day 02, part one, part two, sorry. Version one. All right, let's copy our input in. Does that work? Looks like it. Uh, actually, we're just gonna copy all this. Yes, please. Uh, and we're going to close a bunch of these. Test run test. Okay, so. Because we get rid of that. Is that the other one, too? That was test. We don't want test. Oh, we can bring that back up, though. Get it, Pep 8. And also, let's just make this all official looking. So that's the runner. If name main do that. So make sure it still runs. Yep. And then up here, User bin, environment, Python, three, three. Uh, did we put that in our test? I think we did. Yeah. Oh, let's make it three. Cool. I just want to get this all, like I'm going to commit these. So 
I want to get them all cleaned up and nice looking. Or they're going to be public, whatever. All right, so... Test run, logic. So this... In our test run, like, most of this stuff is the same. Get the low number, get the high number. Test compression. Oh, uh, we actually don't need that. We don't need make compress number. So let's take that out. And we don't need diff number. So take that out. We don't need original number count. Compress number, diff number, original number count. Split password line. All right, so is password valid? V2, this, we want explicit naming going on here. Actually, who knows what that's gonna be yet. High number, low number, target letter, password string. Okay, yes, yeah, so we need all that stuff. High number, letter, password line comes in, password string. Okay, cool. Um, so test runner. Test integration. Let's do our integrations down here. Yes, yeah, I spent more time actually pulling in all the data. Like that, again, could have done that super simply, but this is a really good exercise to practice on. Um, so there's four states, right? If it's there's two there's two slots and either can be on or off, a pass or a fail. So we need to check fail neither slot Both slots. Pass first slot. Pass second slot. Should have done this earlier. True. True. False. 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 So those all pass, right? Uh oh. Broke things. Why is it broken? True count, annotation block. What's going on down here? Uh, hello? What's wrong with you? Oh, 
Oh, come on. What's going on? If name equals main. What is going on? And that expected. Okay, yes. There you go. Now why are you angry? And then expected. What is going on? Surely you don't. Mm. Mm. Come on, Python. What's going on? All right. How about this? We don't worry about it right now. I don't understand what's going on there. If name equals main print here who knows what was going on who knows all right so unit test skip work in progress Skip work in progress. Skip work in progress. All right, so this is gonna be the one that we're working on. So neither. So where's our input? So test run r dot password line equals this. So L needs to be e in either three or four. So we actually want to do neither one of those. Actually, it doesn't matter. It's in neither three or four. Expected false, actual false. And then R is password valid v2 that exists actual equals that still passing now it's gonna fail because we're not passing anything back now we're just gonna straight fire false back at it So that's passing. But let's actually, so now we can actually add logic. So we've got all the rest of the stuff in here and this is we can actually do logic. So low number, high number password line. So what's, I mean, like I'm trying to think like there's a couple different ways you could do this. Um, But is there, I'm trying to think if there's a interesting way to do this just for a split second, but I'm not gonna do that. I'm just gonna do the simplest thing that gets me there. So uh, Yeah, so you just do if. Oh, it's not zero index though. So you got to back off by one. So if password string you could do it this way. Occurrence is equal zero. If 
password string. Low number minus one is target letter. Occurrences plus equals one. I'm actually just jumping straight to logic right now. Um, if password string high number equals that, occurrences plus equals one. If occurrences equals one, return true, else Turn false. I jumped through a whole bunch of tests there. I should have tested that a little bit better, but like, I'm moving on. Um, why is that green? Typo. OCCU. I don't know how to spell occurrences, apparently. Whoops, undo. Not like that. How do you spell occurrences? ENCES. ENCES. Oh, and actually you don't, yes, you do need to do this because that could be either or, and you're looking for one. Yeah, this covers it, I'm pretty sure. So let's run this test. See, this is the problem, is I, I just solved all the things, so now I got to make sure that I really did test it well. Actually, I'm going to back it out. I want to see, I actually want to see if I can test through this. So to start with, return false. So that'll go. It's all about which way you do the tests, but so this is going to fail. Ah, uh, I could do this. Uh, hard way or whatever uh, no let's let's try it okay so this is gonna fail test pass six this should have failed why'd that pass oh because i'm not actually doing anything with it right uh so that's this test, and that's cool. We need to pass it something that's gonna pass. So three or four for L. So one, two, three, and then a bunch of A's. But this is gonna fail because that's not passing right now. Yeah, this is weird. Like, I don't have a good way to test through this. That should pass. Oh, no. Oh, my. Low number minus one. It's not this, right? Huh, okay. I was incorrect in my assumptions that that would pass. Expected true, actual false. Oh, because we're turning false right there. Okay. I was like, yee. I mean, whatever, that happens. Your logic is flawed sometimes. But, um. All right, so there's one. And now we want, I don't know how to not test both these at the same time. To start with, we actually put a test in. That'd be, you know, the start. 
So this needs to be second slot, which is four. So this should fail. Until we put this back in. Now I think it's going to pass. Yep. Yeah, I guess we could have gone with the trues first and then the false, because, like, it's... This, I think, this test is going to pass. False in both slots, right? So L's just across the board. Yeah, it passes. Because the full the full logic's in there. Um, yeah, that's not bad either. breaks the like five line thing or whatever um oh you could do like you could start playing around and reducing lines by like saying if the number is odd or well let's say it's still an either or There's probably there's probably a way with like bits or bytes or something that you could just flip stuff on and say if it equals. I mean it's basically what I'm doing. But like, yeah, you could have like bits and basically say increment if you see one and then if the number equals one or two or whatever. Um All right, so I think that's it. I don't know why it keeps yelling at me there. With open input text feed as magic file see okay that's where I'm getting into logic that I'm not quite like I ex exclusive or I can't remember I know I've heard and seen some of that stuff before but that's not in my wheelhouse yet uh, stuff um, what's it what is Zor? Sorry, yeah, exclusive or there you go. Right, right. How do you do that in Python? I don't know how to do that in Python. Bitwise operator. Oh my goodness. All right. Return the bitwise soar of two integers. Yeah, I am going to have to look at this more intently than I can do right now. Of course, like I've, I've done bit stuff exactly once in Perl 20 years ago. Um, and I didn't, it didn't sink in. Uh, oh, sorry. Hey, I just installed. Oh, shit. Sorry, let me fix that. I just did Nightbot today, and I don't know what it's doing, so let me get that shit turned off. Sorry about that. That was not intentional. I don't know how to turn it off. I'll figure it out. Uh, sorry, I'm still pretty new to this. 
Crap, I don't know how to turn it off. Timers. No timers yet. Oh, hang on. Anybody know how to... I said the example... It's A equal, equals... B equals equals value. Uh, cool. Let's see what happens if we do that. So, uh, give me one second. Sorry. I, I'm interested in this. Uh, new directory bit zor. So like a equal, or sorry, let's do it with actual things. So a equals one, b equals one. I'm not sure I'm following you, but let me uh, try it with booleans. Then you can just apply the same thing in your code. Gotcha. True, true, right. Yeah, so that true, true would be false, right? Because it's it has to be... Is that the character? Oh, 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 wait. Wait. Now I confused. Like that? False. Oh, wow. So this should go true. Oh, that's cool. That's really cool. And if I do this false, false, it's the true true that gets it. Okay. So th let's see if I can remember this. False, false is false. One is true. Other one's true. Both is false. So you've got two false states and two true states. Am I doing that right? And so if I've got, I also didn't know you could do, uh, I didn't know you could do assignments and actually run it in there too. Oh, this is cool. Also, if you spell false right, false, true. That's super cool. False, sweet. <laughs> right like and like i like you kind of know all this stuff is under there and like i've seen there's a really good book out there called code the hidden language of computers which is really good for like walking you through like the basics of like logic gates and stuff but you're just reading about them i've never like done stuff with them so like that's the first time like practically that's the first time that i've seen it like go and didn't, again, I I know I had to do something with it a long time ago, but it was just like I copied code out of a book and it worked. Um, and I it was non me doing stuff. Yeah, no, that's super cool. Thank you, Tommy. That's awesome. Uh, so then you would just do. Oh. Uh, All right, now my brain just broke trying to figure out how you'd put that in here. So you would just do, oh, you would just look at the character itself, flip it to flip it to true if it matches, and then Zor exclusive or the value of the return. I want to see if I can make that work. So. So you just do like a, you'd still, yeah. So you'd still have to do, a equals false. Let's make it actually the word false. B equals false, you just to, just to pick one, right? And then here, a equals true. Uh, where's my other line? B 
b equals true and then return r e t u r n a whatever that symbol is b am i doing this right nope indentation oh wait, hang on it's freaking out down here also i need to run my test suite Got it. Okay, cool. That's really cool. Bioinformatics classes. That is out of my brain space. That's awesome. I've seen a book about it. That's about as close as I got. Oh, oh, right, right, right. Because this is just going to return. I'm going to keep this just in case I really screw something up. So return. Can you just do that? This looks like magic to me. Is this going to work? It's not liking it. Can you put it in a thing? Does this work? Doesn't look like this works. We're going to run it anyways and see what happens. I think it's going to explode. It exploded. We got the if and the... <clears throat> right. I took off the, the colon at the end. I didn't think to actually do... I was so excited, I forgot that, like, if is the thing. Right, okay, I'm with you. Let's give this a shot. That's so cool. That's really cool. All right, so I'm going to have to put a note in when I commit this that, like, I got taught this on stream by Tommy XR because that is really cool. Um, what am I doing? That? Nope. That? I don't know. Um, that kind of blows me away, to tell you the truth. So, yeah, so all of the logic bit stuff is available then maybe oh <laughs> uh crease sorry gree i'm gonna call you gear i'm not sure how to pronounce your name i'm bad at this i'm so new to this i don't know how i'm doing this but yeah mine mine was very basic compared to this until tommy hooked me up about seven minutes ago um That's super neat. I'm really, I'm, that's, that kind of blows me away. So I'm trying, I'm sorry. I'm just a little thunderstruck by this for a second. So like you've got, I just, I'd never thought about putting two, basically two conditionals together and having the capability of looking at them as a whole and getting us like, I never really thought about it as a logic gate, but that's exactly what this is, right? I've got two conditionals that are giving me inputs, either A or B, that are, or sorry, that are either on or off, true or false, whatever, and there's an output. That literally just clicked. That's pretty fantastic. Thank you very much. That is awesome. Like, that's going to be my dream tonight. There should be, like, all the logic gate stuff. And, like, I'm actually going to go look up logic gates again. Because, like, um, again, that so the, the book, by the way, I don't know if you all have seen it. Um, if you're uh, computers. I talk about this once every three days, I think. Um, 
this one's a fun one to read if you're at all interested in computer stuff, which it sounds like clearly you are. I'd be curious it, if you ever read if you ever read it, let me know what you think about it because it like it starts like at the most basic of like here's an on-off switch. And then from the on-off switch, we're gonna go into two on-off switches. And this is how we make binary. And this is how we actually do numbers. And then we turn those into letters and like all this other stuff. And it gets into logic gates and it goes way down into like, you know, flipping bits to do memory registers and stuff. I read through it, but the second half of the book, I was a little bit like, what? Um, but if you ever check it out, uh, you might, sorry, you might be interested in it. I don't know. Also, thank you for the follow. That's awesome. Welcome. And thank you. <laughs> thank you for the follow, but more importantly, thank you for teaching me about Zor gates and logic bits and logic gates. That's fantastic. Um, cool. So let me put in my original solution is commented out below. This one was, are you cool if I like reference you and say like, Tommy XR hooked me up? Because if you're cool, I like eight people are going to see this in the discord that I'm on. Don't, but maybe one of them's a millionaire who wants to hire you. I don't know. Um, but if you're cool with it, I'll give you a little shout out on my Git repo here. Just to say, I appreciate the, uh, the help. That's so cool. Uh, Oh, also, I actually need to run this thing. Should do that too. Cool, cool. Uh, this one was taught to me by Tommy XR on Twitch. He rocks. Thumbs up. Uh oh, I broke it. There it goes. Uh, cool. Again, thank you. That's awesome. Uh, all right, let's actually make it go now. What do you say? Um, so with open. By the way, the number of times people have taught me stuff on stream is incredible. Like I feel like I'm getting way more of a benefit out of this than I did out of college. I probably shouldn't say that. Um, I was bad at college. Uh, input text read as file uh, with line in file. Uh, sure, let's just make sure we got it. Can't type. Everybody cool? Is this going to work? Nope, line is not defined. See? Four. Yeah, there's something wrong there. There we go. Uh, so we're going to bring our runner back into this and then we're going to do is password valid true. Oh, wait, we need a counter counter equals zero. Uh, if R is password true counter plus plus wait, plus equals one. I can't remember how you got in Python. Oops, come here. Print counter. Did I get it? Nope. Oh, non type what? Oh, I think it's doing. Uh, I probably need to set the password. Let's give it the line. R password line equals line. Is that how we do this? That's better. 428. Oh, finished your day two a couple of hours ago. Nice. Yeah, we so I am either moments away from finishing it or farther than moments away from finishing it. We will make that determination. Oh, sweet. Got it. Made it. That's cool. Yeah, I spent, it's funny, I spent, um, you're not kidding. Other, like, that's, going and looking at some of the other people's stuff that have done this, 
like I just want to sit down and actually like I'm at I think this is going to get way more complicated than I'm going to be able to deal with but I'm just going to keep looking at people's day one day two and day three solutions because like some of the stuff out there is just awesome uh so most of them like a bunch of people are posting them on github um the day one it took a while ago it's all weird Reddit. Oh, there you go. Yeah, Reddit. That's right. There's probably a full Reddit on this, isn't there? Reddit. Advent of code. Okay, I don't know what that is. Oh, valid. Too many. Oh, yes. <laughs> He made a Christmas tree. Yeah, so I will be digging into this daily mega threat, right? Yeah. Yeah, I, I want a Discord where some people kick some stuff around that I went and looked through like three or four of them, and it was neat. Like, so one of the things I actually picked up there is this. Like, most of the time when I see people do, like in all the examples, right? It's with open blah as file and that always feels weird for me using the word file just kind of by itself normally i like doing you know whatever input file data file whatever but sometimes you don't want to think of the name but this woman basically just did the underscore file and that gave me enough of a jump in terms of like oh okay it's its own thing it's not just like files feels like it's almost should be a reserved word right um so that's and that's not even logic stuff that's just like style stuff um and so it's I'm I'm really I haven't spent a lot of time looking at other people's code, but that's a thing I'm going to start doing a little more. Uh, I always call it a reader. Uh, the underscore thing. I know that some people use that too, like for identifying private private uh, variables in Python, and some people do like there's some there's like some convention for like single underscore and then double underscore that's basically like private and then like private no seriously private or something um but i i don't have enough experience to to know what that stuff is um i i just kind of bounce around on this stuff i'm getting what's funny is i really am getting way better at this these streams have turned out to be really good for me in terms of learning what's going on or learning period so uh it's cool. I get surprising a lot out of it, which is why I do it kind of often. Um, but yeah, I'm going to go through and look at some other people's stuff and see what's going on with it because it's pretty slick. Um, oh my god. Uh, that's the wrong place. Where did I put this? Day two. Two. Ah, uh, whatever. Get check out master. What? Oh, check out main. Dev. Do 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 and rough. Oh, so I gotta, I don't know how to kill Nightbot. I turned it on today because I thought it would be whatever. Everybody does it, but it's like been nothing but a pain. And I don't know how to tell it to stop doing stuff. Regulars, song request, spam protection, spam protection. Aha. Enabled. Disable. 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 I think we solved it. Sorry about that. Serves me right. <laughs> but I mean, I guess that's what, how you learn, right? Just experiment. Oh, hey, thanks for the follow. Man. Awesome. Zadi, Zadis, 
I got no chance at that one. I am still new to this. Zodi Cody. Zodi. Nope. Thank you for following. I'm oh, sorry for murdering your name. Uh, <laughs> well, Nightbot's a jerk. I mean, I get why it's there. Whatever. Um, that's not something I needed for my stream. Uh, but hey, if you live, you learn. Oh, there you go. Sweet. Uh, don't go there. Go to the thing where I can see you. Oh. I don't think so. I have to get sleep. Because I have hit the point in my life where sleep has become really important. <laughs> um... Oh, it is only an hour away. No, I can't. I can't. I can't. I'll, I'll probably... And, like, tomorrow's gonna suck, um, just work-wise. Uh, I will be back on tomorrow night doing this, because after a day of nothing but meetings, I will be looking forward to actually doing some coding. Um, have, tell me, have you done it? Uh, are you doing the code stuff, too? Or... I mean, clearly you do some... some level of coding, or know some about coding, because if you're doing logic gates... Um, do you do these challenges? Or are they like a thing you like? I, like? This is the first time I've done it, so like I'm enjoying it. But I really have the distinct feeling after hearing some other people talk about this that it's going to get to the point where I'm like out either on math or on the science. Like some of it's the math stuff too, right? I think it's, some of it gets math heavy and that wasn't my uh, my thing. Sweet. Nice. Data engineer with math. Okay. Um, well, as this progresses, swing by the stream every now and then and watch me sweat. And then if you want to throw some tidbits at me, I've got no problem with this. It's not like a cheating thing. Um, that's cool. Uh, <laughs> right. Excellent. No, that's, that's seriously, that's going to be in my head for a little bit. Like that was... Well, you probably saw the light come on in my head. Um, it was a, it was an, uh, an exclusive or light. Like, I didn't get it, and then I did... No, I don't know. I, there's no joke there that I can make. I mean, there's a joke there somebody can make. I, that's, I don't have the skills to pull that joke off. So, um, Yeah, cool. Uh, all right, so I pushed that up. Oh, I was going to look at... Part one. Cool if I look at your code? Sorry, I want to, I mean, you said it. I just want to make sure, I don't want to be, I mean, I already flashed your link up and it's in the chat, but I just want to make sure before I like look at your code, that you're cool with that. Cool, okay. Um, so you use much fewer things than me. All right, so part one solution, you get the entries from util, parse entries. Where'd you get util? Oh, okay, gotcha. Read file. Split lines, right, gotcha. Parse entries. Split, okay, all right, yeah. So you did splits as well. Entry zero, parse entries, for entry and entries. Oh, oh okay. Grab lower and upper. Limits equals entry zero split. Oh, oh, okay, okay, okay. I gotcha. So you're grabbing. You split on the space, then pull the numbers out here, and then just move them into limits. I gotcha. Okay, that's cool. I like that. Remove the letter. Okay, so you're just nuking it. Password's just what's left. Parse entry, limit, upper, lower. Oh, so you made a little hash out of it. Or dictionary? I forget what Python calls them. Okay, cool. I like it. Right, so you got the entries. Valid password zero for Ian entries. Count 
E password. Count in the letter. Okay. If count is greater than or equal to right, and it's lower than or equal to valid passwords equals plus one. Okay. Yeah. Cool. I like that. Who cares if I like it or not? But like, if I like it. I appreciate it. How about that? Uh, all right. So you get your entries again. Valid passwords. First position, second position. Oh, this is your falses, right? Limit lower. Oh yeah, you target you target the position. Uh, if password F, so that's the position. Oh, okay, I see what you did. Neat. Um. So if password, if you get the string from the position of the password and it bangs on the letter, you flip it to true, there's your true, and here, yeah, and here's the same thing, right, where you do the, the checks. If first position and not second position, or, or else if not position first, okay, right on. Yeah, I was doing the, originally doing the thing of, do, of counting the occurrences, um, and, and rolling it that way. Um, hey, Zelly. Uh, after six days, it starts getting a little tough. Okay. Then I will be terrified at day four. Uh, so I used... So this is not mine. This is... Other... 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 Other muffins? Uh, a thug muffins? A thug muffin. That's probably it. Um... It's their code, uh, and then, but I, I use Python uh, for mine, uh, which looked a little bit more like, here's my first one. So I basically just grabbed, I was messing around with it. I wrote some tests too, but I like, I just moved everything into instance variables, including like, uh, so the way that I did it was, I looked at the length of the string for the first part, and then I compressed the string by removing all of the, like if it was B, I just sucked out all the Bs. And then I got the length of that string and then I did the comparison that way. And if the number was high, higher or lower, then, you know, false. Um, and then if it wasn't, it was true. Uh, and then I learned about exclusive ORs right here, which is amazing for the second part, um, where I was going through and I was doing the same thing looking for the password in the particular slot and then doing a comparison and like if you find it this value would be true and then if you found it this value would be true and this is the exclusive or thing that i learned about tonight which is awesome where if both of them are true the value returned is false if one and only one of them is true the value returned is true and if both of them are false it's false um i was doing it this way down here where i was counting occurrences uh but Tommy showed up and showed me some magic. That is awesome. Uh, so that's where we are. Yeah, part two, I was starting to get a little, eh. Um, this is what I wrote. If words min equals keywords and words max, Um, words men not equal to keywords and words max. I don't quite have the context for that in my head. If words men equals equals keywords and words max not equal to keywords. I don't quite have that in my head. Kirk, um, Garrick, Garrick, sorry, bad at this. Yeah, <laughs> Zor, right? I didn't know how to Zor until 20 minutes ago. Uh, yeah, let's see what you got, man.
All right, get your file system. All right, or FS, sorry. So I don't really know JavaScript that well. Um, so this may take me a minute to parse through a little bit. All right, so you're pulling your p password stuff, getting the min, max numbers, passwords. Gotcha, gotcha, gotcha. Getting everything loaded up. For i and zero, i less than equal to the password length. Okay, so we're looping through the password length. If you're finding it, password i equals equals letter, right? Included plus plus. So, that, okay, so that's where you increment. And then if include, yeah, yeah, okay, right, yeah. So you just parsed, you just walk through the letters and ran a count of them. That's good. Yeah, I like that too. It's so funny, like there's just, and I did, there's a, a website out there called Exorcism. .io that's challenges like this, but kind of aimed at teaching and learning. And I looked at it a while ago and it was neat because it was like, even for the most basic things, there's this like, oh, I, here's the way that you do that. And then like, I looked in like 30 other ways to do what existed and I had like no idea. Um, it's just, it's a super, it's a super fun exercise. Right. Two ifs to do your Zor, yeah. Hey, if it if it compiles and it gives you the right answer, or if it gives you the right answer, because by definition that kind of means it compiles, right? Um, now, if you have the magic to make it not compile and give you the right answer, you're a witch. Um, where'd your code go? Let's get a look at the rest of it. I want to see your part two. Password length included, password push. All right, this is gonna take me a second. So you're looping through it again. If password I, the password index is the letter, you're doing the included. Wait, this is part two, right? Am I part two? Because part two, are you using this? Indexes push. <laughs> Indexes LMAO. Indexes men letter or max equals letter. I'm lost on the included. Is this? Is that, is that still being used? No, it does not look like it. Okay. But, you're, but yeah, but this is you pushing stuff onto the indexes to pull this way. I gotcha. Okay. Yeah, yeah. And then if if not, indexes at the position of the minimum equals letter and the other way. Yeah. So that's your that's where I was going to is the is the kind of I was doing it differently but the two have things I was yours are nested I hadn't thought about that I'm saying yours are nested like you don't know but that's me thinking out loud that's what that is see I was a bunch of people that I'm gonna discard with talk about rust a lot and like for 13 seconds, I was like, hmm, maybe I'll try it in a different language. But like, I'm also doing some website stuff right now and like messing around with other stuff. And I was like, and I like opened uh, one of their examples from day one on Rust. And I was like, nope, that's maybe next year. That is not this year. This year is definitely Python because that's what I've been working on recently. Oh. Sorry, time I almost uh almost missed you there. What just happened? Wait, is this your stuff? 
Whoa, what is this? I don't know what the site is, or what carbon is. Pardon me, but I take a little detour. No way. I've never seen this before. That's pretty neat. Syntax highlight. Oh yeah, so you can choose your theme. Apache? I didn't know that was a thing. I mean, it's a thing, but I didn't know it was like a language. Oh, for the Apache config, probably. Tweet, export. Oh, this is really cool. I didn't know this was a thing. Sorry, code. Um. Oh, you can pull it as an image? Okay, that's cool. Hey, every guy. Uh, these days, my language is Python, but I am not religious about that stuff at all. <laughs> Uh, to me, they're all just tools to get the job done. Pick them. Uh, I'm really enjoying Python right now, except when it gives me the indent thing that happens every now and then that I spent five minutes on earlier. But like every language has a little bit of that. Swapped out the if first, or yeah. This is neat though, it's like a gist, but colorful and nice. And if you can do an image too. Oh, look at that, sweet. Yeah, I'm trying to work on syntax highlighting on my site a little bit and getting some stuff like for the in inputs and the outputs. Like I wanna have the code blocks, but I don't want any space between them. And I know you can do this, I just haven't done it yet. Um, but like this kind of has me thinking about some of that stuff too. I've never seen Julia before. I'm not even sure that I knew Julia was a language. Okay, right, so function part, invalid, for line, each line input, okay, min max. So here, oh, you're just using a regex. I almost did that. Um, I. I did Perl for a long time, so like regex is I'm fine with it, as long as they don't do that weird like look behind over the river and through the woods stuff. Parse int min and max count letter password max. Oh, okay, you're doing that. So this is basically two if statements rolled up into one, right? So this, if this condition, and then if also this condition. So if it's less than, yeah, okay, that's cool. I don't know if you can do that in Python. I don't remember seeing it. Part two, wow, this is short. Here's your, that's your, is this the, wait, what do I feel like? This looks broken. Is this really the end? Is that how that ends? Going into Python. Army guy, nice. Oh, work you C sharp, okay. I've never done C sharp. Um, I've I've barely touched any of the C's. Oh, I huh, I wonder. Oh, because is it all? It's all in the code. Yeah, because there's the last three characters. IX2. Oh, it's all in the URL. That's, I've seen people do that before. That is just genius. I love that. Yeah, I'll bet it just can't. Um, it ran out of characters. That's slick. I still like it, even if it broke it, or even if I broke it. I 
That's really cool. So let me see if I can guess the rest of it. So this is your if, but is this is this the the exclusive or character for Julia? Because you're saying if like here's if password ix1 equals the letter, so password index one, right? Hits your letter and then password index two hits the letter. So you're doing comparisons in both of those things. And then, th excuse me, that's where the exclusive or takes in. And then down here it would say return true, return false. Am I close? Yeah. Increment by one and return invalid. Okay, cool, right. Oh, it was a better Java. I did that much Java. Um, nothing real for it. Um, does anybody remember applets? Because that's when I started doing a little bit of Java. Um, but then not really. And then I was just copying and pasting stuff. Uh, because that was... Ha, like... Whatever. I, I didn't do traditional class like I didn't take classes in school um so all the stuff is just me banging around on things um and the Java and those things like Perl is where I got into it basically um so Java and some of that stuff when I was first looking at it was a little bit like that looks harder than I'm ready to get into at the moment <laughs> hey Sally, thanks for the follow hope you're having a good time Thank you for sharing your code. I always love looking at other people's code, especially like these small chunks of code, like because I can get my head around it. Like it's just doing these quick comparisons and like looking at stuff for like, look at these two values. If they're both true, it's false. If they're both false, it's false. If one or the other is like, it's an exclusive or. Um, uh, yeah, I'll show you mine. Uh, oh, magically, it's right here. Yeah, so... And the, the the thing that helped me get my head around it was this. Just this little scratch pad. Um, like, that's... So we've got the false coming in, we've got the false coming in, and then return it. And that's the little character, if you're in, uh, if you're in Python. Um, and then, whoops, I blew right past it. There it is. So, look, I've been doing this for a while now. And, like, if you're already starting to get into the advent of code just in general, like, if you're still learning, like, also, I'm still learning. My guess is if you talked to anybody on the chat, they would tell you that they're still kind of learning some stuff. Uh, so don't... I, I don't know. There's, it seems to me like a lot of people feel ashamed to say, oh, I'm still learning or whatever, but like maybe you're just newer at it. That's fine. But like learning's part of it. Yeah. See, right. Army's got you in a thug muffin. I feel like that's, I feel like that's gotta be it. Oh yeah. You need the prints. Yeah. Yeah. Well, and you, I don't know if you were here, but I was trying to leave the, leave the ifs in. And like PyCharm was sitting there with these giant red lines. I was like, eh, maybe it'll work. Didn't work. Um, all right, I gotta switch for real quick. Ah, foot is very much asleep. Um, yeah, no, I, uh, I... And the other thing, Dali, for me is... Like, so I started working on stuff a while ago. When I got out of the web stuff, CSS1 was still a thing. I think CSS is a three now, and like I'm starting to get back into it. So like everything is just like jumping back in and it's like, okay. And by the way, you y'all have it. If if you're newer to this world now, you have it tougher. And I want to like acknowledge that y'all have it tougher if you're newer than 
on the website than when I was coming up doing it. Um, so occasionally you'll hear people who've been doing stuff for a long period of time. It's like, oh, it's easy. Just add this one little pit, one little bit. But if you've got the, like this giant history of work, that one little bit already has a tremendous amount of context for you. If you're newer, it takes you a lot longer to figure that stuff out. That is not a failure of you. That's just the way that the human brain works is because you don't have years of context. So again, I, I don't know where you are in your, in your, um, in your, I hate using this word, but in your journey, uh, but in your, but in your practice, right. Um, but don't be, people are going to give you crap, whatever. Um, but yeah, all the, all these folks. Yeah. Oh, well, CSS three and HTML five. Yeah. See, so like, I have a lot to learn. Um, appreciate that Tommy. Yeah. It's like, that's by the way, that's not coming from me. This is like, you'll hear that from lots of folks who aren't trying to be jerks. Um, and like, I think what's cool for me is I think more and more people like, so Twitter is where I am most of the time where I see most of the stuff these days. And like, at least with the people that I follow the, and the toxicity, right. is becoming less of a thing still. It's very much there, but like, I, I like the idea of trend lines. I don't have hard evidence on it, but like the feeling is a little bit more like, okay, let's actually try and help each other out here and not try and murder each other. Um, and not be just assholes. Um, but yeah, like, and yeah, don't, don't, don't let the bastards get you down. Um, which is, it's easy to say hard to do recognize that too. Um, but yeah, so I, uh, I hope you swing back by too at some other point and say, hi, let me know how you're doing. Um, not that I'm leaving right now or anything, but, uh, though I do have to go before too terribly long because again, sleep is now a thing that has to happen or my brain goes blah i don't know what it does it goes to not good places um but i'm trying to think what was i gonna do um so i've got the code i want to see one i want to bookmark this because this is awesome uh code dev demos that's cool too dev We'll add that to my mix. Um, all right. So the thing that I was going to do tonight before it took me all that time to come up with those answers, which I'm not at all angry about. Like I, I really, I enjoyed that. Um, I was going to mess around with my website tonight, but I'm, I don't want to get started with that because if I start, I'm not going to go to bed and I would pay for that tomorrow. Um, Ooh, what is this? We shall take a look. I don't, this looks like you jumped on the keyboard to me. I'm sure it's a thing, but I don't get it. Um, import OS class helpers, def sort data. Gotcha. Self data input or input data. Sorry. Data sorted, sorted. Ooh, you're using lambdas. Okay. I'm going to look at that in a minute. I still don't totally get lambdas. You pass. It gets X, which goes into your, and then this is the function. And you're getting a length and then X itself. Oh, this is for the sorting. I've looked at this before, but it does, I don't have it in my head yet. Also, how to do the N2 and then... I don't understand how to do that. That's cool. Um, get text. Drawing it to root. Okay. Open path, read, split. Oh. Oh, my. Read, 
read into variables like slurp. That is awesome. Whoops. So I've I've done this before. I never thought about doing the split. So this is create a list of the lines. This is what I was actually doing. I did this literally today. This is much better. That's really slick. That's really cool. I should put chat up so I can see it. Uh, oh, sorry, I don't mind you asking. Uh, is this, which right now, so I capture the links that I go to every day. My browser, I just grab them and I filter them uh, and then put them out. And then I put up stream notes. So most of the stuff that I have there right now is just those. It's one of the reasons I'm looking to, to do it. So there's not like, it's all that crap. Go back to like, if you actually want to see something, go back to like page six or something and you'll see something. Um, but I'm actually, that's one of the reasons I'm going to work on it a little bit. Cause it's just, it's a pollution of that stuff. Like I still want all that stuff up there, but I don't want it to be just like the full list of it. Oh, Jupyter Notebook. Ah, right, right, right. Nice. Rather have someone who can think and solve issues. Yeah, that's good to hear. Um, I've been incredibly lucky in the, in the jobs that I've had. That's what they've been looking for because I like... I am not a skilled programmer, like, but I can figure out how to make a thing go, which I think makes me a skilled programmer. Like, you're like building an operating system, building language. Nope. Uh, give me six years. Sure. But for the problem solving stuff, and I, I, it's good to hear you say that. Like, I really hope that becomes more of a thing. And I hope that's a thing that we can keep teaching people how to do is the other trick with that. Um, but yeah, that's, that's good. That's reassuring to hear army. Right, cause for me, cause I'm a problem solver. Like I'm not a programmer. So like, to me that that's great. Somebody who's a pure programmer and not necessarily, and like, you know, there's overlap. Right. But I, I think I hear where you're coming from. That's just a format for Jupyter notebooks. Uh, just one liner close the file. Oh, good question. That's a good question. Uh, I don't think it does explicitly. It would probably have to fall off the end. Is that right? But at the worst, okay. But what you could do, right, is you could as you could run this to with open as file, and then do that, right. Um, yeah, you'd probably want to do it that way, wouldn't you? It's, for me, it's, the biggest trick for me is the, is the dot split at the end. Like, I just, that had, like, I mean, I've literally been looking at this for a while, and then literally was doing this to, like, pull stuff in and split it out this way by looping through the, so I was looping through the lines and then doing an append while stripping the, um, the new line. That's way more elegant. No, split lines. Have I seen that before? I'm asking you. Do you all in my head? Split lines, split lines. Eh, whatever. We'll go look at W3 schools gets a lot of crap. I learned a bunch of stuff off them. I still it's still Something about it still feels a little weird sometimes, but whatever. Welcome to the jungle. 
Thank you for the music. Welcome to the jungle. Splits lines, print X. They don't actually show you. I don't want to try it myself. Show me the output. They used to show you the output. I don't want to try it myself. Just make it go. See, I shouldn't have had to click over that. Just put that on the other page. There's probably an ad impression here that they got for that. Um, split lines equals true. It's also weird that they're not showing it to you on a file. Let's go look at another one. String. Oh, it, everybody likes doing it with strings. Okay, but it basically just does a split for you. And I still don't know how to OD. I'm sorry. I really am. Um, I want to say it feels like I should say Odysseus or... Somehow it feels like it should be Odysseus. So maybe, and look, there's Greeks right here. So it feels like it's a sign. Um, yeah, but I'm with you on the slap stuff together. Uh, the, but yeah, I think, I think that one. And so I think that's one of those things where it would be fine, but like I try and like, like, oh, okay. What, how could things go sideways? Um, and then bang off that. Uh, where do we have? All right, so here we go. That was a little bit of a rabbit hole. I'd do that. Help yourself with something like Get text. Day input dot text. Helpers length for i and range of x, which is length of the original data. Temp. Original data I split on. Okay. So they're moving into temp variable. I gotcha. Log integer of the zero spot when you're splitting on that. Right. And then grabbing the first return from the splitting on it. That that one I that one's a little that 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 starts to get that's one step away from my brain not being able to parse it um letter temp one zero okay uh password is just the rest if password count oh dot count didn't know that was the thing odysseus I had it. <laughs> I I feel like I've made progress today in like so many ways. I got a name. Uh, I've been bitten production by not closing files. Yeah, I I haven't. That's not true. I haven't in a long time. Um. Uh when I was first doing Perl stuff, I didn't close files on a server that I didn't actually have access to that never stopped and ate itself a couple times. Uh, that was that was not a happy call that I got. Muffin, hey, thanks for following. Appreciate it. Digging it. Um, well, so I was trying to get I guess I should have done. So is the O a thing or just say Thug Muffin? Like, this is me being old, non Twitch person. Like, do I just skip the O? Is it just Thug Muffin? Or, like, I just say Muffin, right? You can just go with the last part. That makes sense. Thug Muffin, right. Or Muffin. I think Thug Muffin's got a good ring to it. That's, that's solid. O Thug? All right. Nah, Thug Muffin, I think, is. I th if you're asking for an external opinion, that is definitely the marketing winner. 
Stug Muffin. Uh, I didn't know about this count. Right. Fruit counts cherry X. Return the number of times the value cherry appears in fruits list. Well, it's just going to be one. List count. See, they could do so much better with their examples. I saw a really good example site the other night that I need to go dig up. Um, and I don't know. So do y'all have websites, by the way? If you do, throw them in the chat so I can link them up uh, on my... So I'm going to start linking... I'm keeping a collection of other people's websites, just people who have websites. I don't care what they are. Um, just because I want to like start having more of a network of websites instead of just Facebook or Twitter or Instagram or wherever. Um, the muffin from the streets. Oh. Netlify. I know a bunch of people have been doing Netlify. Um, I can't click on it right now. There we go. Where are we going? Uh, this. Ah, sweet. See, you've already blown me away because you made text move on a page. I don't know how to do that yet. Uh... People. GitHub pages, yeah. Um, to my site right now, it's on a software called Hugo, which is just a static site engine. Uh, and I'm serving it off of Amazon S3. Um, but like, I'm about like I'm about to go to like I don't know if y'all heard of like the digital garden stuff that's become. I only found out about it like two weeks ago. It may have been around for a few years, um, but kind of a different idea of how you approach your website or whatever. Because uh, I've, I've been wanting to do some stuff with it, and some of it was already the digital garden stuff. Like, I want to put more of my code samples out there and just my general notebooks for, like, here's stuff that I ran into that I don't necessarily want to open a Stack Overflow question and answer it myself on. Just, like, here's some snippets of code. Um... But a bunch of the folks on this Discord are like getting into it and like doing all this other stuff. I've seen some really cool stuff. Mine is going to look very plain, but I'm at least going to give it a shot and make it neat. And I think one of the things I want to do, right, is is link up other people's sites. Like, hey, here's other people who have websites not, that are not behind wall gardens. Um, get up pages and fly a lot more stable. Oh, that's cool. Yeah, I've, I haven't looked at Netlify yet. It's on my list. Um, of stuff to kind of mess around with. Never finished web projects because you're tired of working on them from the, yeah, from the job. Yeah, I get that. One of the, so one of the things that's got me going right now is I don't spend very much time coding in my day job. Like over the course of a year, it's maybe 10%. And then also the streaming stuff for whatever reason, my brain digs. Uh, the And I think one of the big reasons is there's that whole concept of rubber duck debugging, which is like where, you know, if, you, if you're working on a problem, if you go talk to somebody else about it, you think about it differently. The idea being that you can just have a rubber duck instead of a person. Streaming stuff for me is the same way. So like half the time there's nobody out there, but that doesn't matter. It's just the the process of talking through things out loud and the process of kind of going through it is like switched my brain a little bit. It's really, I'm, I'm really enjoying it. But I'm totally with you. Like I, I used to, I used to do a, a lot more code stuff. And the last thing I want to do was mess around with it. But like this, this whole digital garden idea too is like fun for me. Cause it's just like messing around. And also it's, it, I like the website is not going to be in pristine shape. Like I'm going to build it in on itself basically so i'm not going to worry about every little thing being right all the time it's the idea of the garden so like i'm going to put stuff here and stuff there and like it's going to grow over time right and like sometimes there's going to be weeds all that stuff so like i'm really i'm, I'm really kind of digging this did 
just sent an email because I just changed it with an outfly. Oh, cool. Nice. Oh, you use your rubber duck. Oh, you use your anime figures. Yeah. Um, I actually have a rubber duck, and then I also have uh I, I talk to a skull when I need to. Um But what all the streaming, I don't need to anymore. Um That's me right now. I'm still gonna I'm gonna throw it in my uh, I'm gonna throw it in my list. And when it shows up, it will be there. Sweet. <laughs> um yeah, no, the rubber duck. I, I think it's I think it's literally called rubber duck debugging. Rubber duck debugging. Debugging? That's a different thing. Yeah. That's the that's the general of it. Um and Zally, so here's the trick. I don't think it's morbid. I think so all right. Here's the way I look at it. There's this this thing that artists used to do. The idea is, well, we're gonna get all philosophical now, right? So an object serving as a warning or reminder of death, such as a skull. But like artists, if you ever look at old old paintings, or maybe new paintings, I don't know. I haven't seen new paintings forever. Um, there's often skulls in them. It's a it's so it's not a reminder that death is around the corner. It's a reminder that life is short and like to not waste it. Um, so you can look at it that way too. So to me, like I've had a skull on my desk for years and that's what it is. It's a memento mori. So like I choose to look at it that way. Um, so it freaks people out. Don't get me wrong. Like Halloween, nobody notices it, but like May people kind of give me the like, you know, you got a skull on your desk, right? Which I say, no, I didn't. Life is the envy of all of the dead. Yeah, that's a good one. Uh, who's that? I like that. That's very nice. Uh, yeah, and so I it it legit helps remind me every now and then life is short, right? So I like it. All right, that's philosophy 101 for somebody who doesn't know anything about philosophy babbling on stream for the night, but... Again, I'm just saying stuff other people have told me, so hopefully it's right. <laughs> nice. Roll it tomorrow. I don't know that one. Uh, I gotta do that on a different monitor, otherwise YouTube's gonna yell at me if I put this up. Isn't... Isn't that a Tom Cruise film that's much longer than 16 minutes? Maybe that's day after tomorrow. No, it's not a time cruise. What's the one edge of tomorrow? Edge of tomorrow. If you all haven't seen this and you like action films, go. Don't look it up. Don't do anything. Just it's a good action film. You'll enjoy it. Um, all right, cool. I gotta, I gotta start winding down here to tap out. Um, this has been awesome. Thank you all for the follows and for hanging out. It's been cool. Uh, I'm going to be on most nights in general, but especially doing this, uh, day of code stuff, advent of code. Um, sometimes I may do the code earlier cause I want to, I do want to do that stuff on my website and I want to do that on stream. Um, but we'll kind of see how it goes. So feel free to stop back and say hi, because I think that would be awesome. And again, thanks for the follows. That's awesome. That's really cool. Uh, but with that, I got to start getting out of here. So y'all have a good one. And we'll see you. Do Advent of Code, when it releases. Y'all staying up. Well, I don't know what time zone y'all are in, but like, it's a my it's it's midnight, my time zone, and thing. All right, cool. See y'all. It's been great.
Take it easy. We'll see you next time.